there are a lot of art in games. From concept art, environment art, character art, visual effects, sound design, animation, tech art, and GUI, well, you get it. Art is pretty much every scene that you can see and hear. Today, we'll look into Rune Realm's visual art choice and style. When you break down a game to its core, what you're really building is art. That's why, after the story, which it can be considered art, game production pipeline starts with the concept. And this is the billion dollar phase that can make or break a project. Think about concept art. Starting image, right? But underneath this pre-image surface, concept art's core purpose is to solve problems by design visual solutions. There is a lot we could cover about art, but today we're going to look into how we landed on Rune Realm's art style and, more importantly, why this art style. When choosing a game art style, there are multiple things you need to consider. For example, the feeling of the game. Fortnite and PUBG, even though they are similar in gameplay, the art styles are different and they feel different. When you play them, one of them is more playful, more colorful and kind of more pushed to the limit when it comes to animation and the stylization of the game. The other one is more rigid, more serious and kind of more real. On top of that, you also need to consider the other factors, like tech, budget, implementation of the art in game. For Rune Realms, we looked into three alternatives. The first one was a voxel-based game, a 3D game or a isometric 2D game. A voxel art is impressive. A well-executed voxel art can add a feeling of nostalgia and something familiar. We also believe that voxel art is not explored as it should, and we haven't seen yet a company push voxel art to the limit to what it can actually do. You can build amazing scenes with voxel art, and the individual 3D pixels allows you to implement exciting physics into the game that otherwise will just be too complex to execute on. However, for a game like Rune Realms, two crucial factors are clarity and readability. Imagine for example that you're in the middle of a battle in League of Legends, and all of the characters are voxel based. It would be extremely hard to communicate what is happening and confuse players visually. The same goes for Rune Realms. You need to be able to clearly distinguish between what each building does and also who each character is. So for that reason, a voxel based game would be extremely hard to execute for a MMORTS game. The next choice is 3D, and 3D is an interesting choice. Most games go into the 3D route because it significantly reduces the production time. When you create a modular 3D asset, you can flip, turn, twist, or even build something entirely new from the same asset. However, with speed, it doubles the production cost. Of course, you still need a concept artist to problem solve the assets that the 3D artist will build. However, building it in 3D, it makes it a lot easier to rig and animate, and also to produce more characters overall. One example that I can give you is if you model a cup. If you need to model a taller cup, you don't need to basically to remodel that again, you can just stretch the polygons in order to make it taller. The same goes for characters or for buildings. You can basically just copy and paste that building and then change whatever detail you need to. That's why the 3D route can significantly improve in your production time. Nowadays, the majority of games opt for 3D production. The few that choose 2D are often platformers or side-scrolling games. Besides the fact that 2D art takes longer to produce, often it can actually be an excellent option for games, for the simple fact that the same artist problem in solving the initial visual problems of the game is the exact same artist working in the game production, allowing to streamline the process and reducing the communication entropy while making the project more budget-friendly. 2D art is also less rigid, and it can be way more charismatic and have a warmer feeling for the simple fact that it looks more like a friendly illustration than just a mass-produced 3D asset. With that in mind, we decided to create a 2D game that would feel like 3D, using the magic of perspective and isometric art. Also, as funny as Destiny is, our art director is a beast when it comes to isometric art. Just look at this beautiful work. From there, the process is simple. Step 1. Create a description. Step 2. 
grab references. Step 3, throw it at Rodrigo and he will take care of everything. Reason and repeat. The concept art phase is one of the most exciting parts of building a game, because it's when you can see an idea coming to life. In this video, we've looked into how we landed into the Rune Realms art style. Now, connecting the dots looking backwards seems easy, but remember that behind the amazing art for the game, it has a month of planning, iterating changes and rebuilds. We are confident that we made the right choice for the future of Rune Realms, and that it will allow us to build a world that can inspire the next generation of games and artists. But I pass the question off to you. If you're building a game, what style would you choose? In the next episode, we are going to look into the game's pre-production phase. Some easter eggs about Rune Realms, a couple of new informations on how the game works, and past ideas that we had during the game production. We are also going to look into how we deconstruct the entire game and rebuild everything from scratch, just to make a better fit in terms of introducing, let's say, tokenomics. I'm also going to take you behind the scenes and we are going to build a game flow chart for production from scratch. Who knows, it can inspire the next idea or the next entrepreneur, grab that idea and create your own game. That said, I'm looking forward to seeing you in the next episode.